I'll send you a postcard from Paradise Bowl. Yep, we're doing up today. Some say this is Pixar in their absolute absolute prime featuring the best scene in animated history untoppable i mean it was a tiktok trend at one point that's about as high a compliment you can get in this current gen z internet world though at the same time it kind of has ratatouille syndrome it seems to me it's nobody's favorite all the way through it has the best moment but no one really freaks out about the scene where they're at the campfire or something you know it's not one of those movies where every minute is your best minute I still like it, of course. It's the weird underdog that's surprisingly one of the best, at least partially. Just because of the way it talks to us directly. Because today we are, of course, covering that scene, that montage, the up highlight. The opening intro that introduces us to the character of Carl. So... Let's begin. The movie opens up with a backstory sequence of Carl as a kid, but we're gonna skip past all the dialogue parts. We're gonna kick things off at the very start of the montage. All you need to know is that Carl is the shy and quiet type and Ellie is the loud and enthusiastic, establishing their adoration for adventure with a book of all the things they're gonna do in the future. And quiet Carl is completely blown away by this go-getter of a girl. I like you. Wow. Flip siding against this window frame, one kid on one side and the other on the other. I'm not sure if that particularly means anything symbolic, but it's an example of some nice directing and compositing as opposed to just saying it while lying in bed. Carl, by the way, is in the bed with a cast because he broke his arm climbing up in the attic while hunting for a balloon. The very one he's resting on now. How did it reach him? Again, in an incredibly unique piece of directing. That balloon is a key thing in regards to Carl and Ellie's growing relationship, and of course will be so relevant to the main plot of the movie as well. And we're off! The events of the movie take place when Carl is old, so let's start skimming through the years, with a pop and a flash to really jolt audiences to the time skip, immediately finalising the romance arc in record-breaking time. But for those of you who haven't seen enough of the characters yet, here's the perfect representation of their traits. Carl coming out of his shell but still reserved, and Ellie diving to take the initiative. Still the same after so many years. And you can imagine that can be sourced from their families and upbringing. But let's see a hit of those at this wedding. <laughs> Yep, that looks about right. The hyper enthused has a hyperactive celebration routine. D did that guy just shoot a bloody gun inside the church? Whilst Mr. Reserved has a comically reserved applause to him too. Reflections of themselves split directly down the middle and just a bit of cartoony fun. Let's move on to some more. Here's the iconic house shot head on for our recognition and wide to see the full scope. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but only acts to make the whole thing so much more humble. This is also the exact same house that they specifically met up in, so it has just heaps of sentimental value immediately. These aren't a couple of millionaires inheriting a mansion, although I imagine this thing does cost a fortune these days. The shot is slow, static, and Carl is waddling up to the yard. He's not struggling, it's just giving us, the audience, time to soak it in a tad. Now, time for the DIY. With the soundtrack officially switching out to our montage music, a happy rendition of the main up theme. Beforehand, we just had a classic wedding bells motif. And naturally for their characters, Ellie is the one taking the initiative, sawing the wood herself. She's always been the type, and no feminine wedding dress is going to get in the way of her dreams. Though it is funny, they are still literally in their wedding gear. Is this their honeymoon? They really were invested in making this happen. Camera switching from hands to wider to see Ellie full with her leg up on the workstation, and Carl hammering away in the background before a little later pushing some chairs into place. This will be their iconic chairs, each pushing each other's chairs into place. The dark and square and the bright and rounded. Again, aging up just a little bit with clothing changes to boot. And then there's the lighting, adding a bit of a bloom effect to make everything look so dreamy. It's a life goal they are working on right here, and everything seems so perfect and idyllic. It's the good times. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it's not just about the practical development of a DIY house, it's about adding your own personal character and creativity to the mix. Painting a mailbox isn't exactly what I'd call mandatory, but it's a nice little extra. Camera pulling away the whole time as the first and last frame of this moment need more space to be captured. Plus, it's a slow reveal, even if there is that twist in the middle. Carl is a little clumsy, and his immediate response is disappointment and negativity. But Ellie is different. Happy to run with the punches and divert from the rigid plans. It's a character trait of hers that makes her so much more appealing to us audience members to really capture our hearts. And somehow make something even better than just simple text on a white box. What is it with painted handprints that we like so much? I remember watching a movie that had a family painting a wall messily with their handprints as well, and it just seemed so endearing. If I ever own a home, I think I'm going to do something like that. What movie was that anyway? Oh, Bridge to Terabithia. Another movie that just snaps you in half with emotions, huh? I guess painted handprints is the mark of the devil that something bad is going to happen, huh? Anyway... You can also spot now that the whole house in the background is fully painted too. The Simpsons would be proud. Or we could just see it in the forefront too. First starting with a doodle from when they were kids to show this is a literal childhood dream come true. Very nice, very nice. Moving on, we next get this heel shot, positioned side on to really capture the steepness of it. Ellie skipping up top as Carl trails behind, yet bright green against a beautiful blue sky, all the more showcasing their dynamic as Carl asks for a moment while Ellie is already prepped for her picnic. It's endearing through and through, even if they're not both perfectly fit. Actually, I think we would all find that quite annoying. The conflict of ability somehow makes it more satisfying. But once he's up there, we eventually get... A little bit of youthful joy, just lying down together looking up at clouds. Bread, cheese and wine and a camera too. Ellie rambling on about what she sees in the cloud, but Carl just happy to live in the moment. This is his happy place, next to his wife, holding hands and listening to her talk. The bright sun and pathetic fallacy for some happy days. Not to mention their clothes equally as bright and joyous. But of course, these folks need to work, so now we get an insight to their workplace, both at the zoo. First establishing that pretty blasé with a giant zoo sign, before craning down and in as we enter into this other world. Ellie handles the actual animals, and Carl is the balloon man. Again, that theme of balloons keeps reappearing for obvious reasons. Always the one with a little bit of mishap happening around him, but he can laugh at it now, always having someone to turn back at and smile with. Just more endearing antics from another aspect of life. And then this simple little shot of them sat in their chairs. They're a couple that likes to read, but they can read together. Holding hands to show their bond runs deep. Though they totally can't turn the page if their hand is occupied, so clearly they're just being impractical here. And now we're back to here. Clearly the hilltop is a favourite place. This time Carl is contributing to the cloud visuals as they turn into not turtles, but children. The very next live event rolling up into their lives. Camera leaning closer to them as they deliberate to a yes and see them everywhere. And it's at this point I should mention, of course, this whole montage is without dialogue, which acts to make everything so much more special and creative to have to get across all of these ideas visually. Dialogue, I'm sure, could assist in telling the story, but it isn't necessary. What is it really going to add that we can't see for ourselves? And us having to fill in the gap only makes the experience seem all that more compelling, as our imagination can come up with so much more stark interaction sometimes. Plus, in telling this story without dialogue, it instantly becomes universal. Almost every language can understand the visual, and doing a sequence like this means you don't need to translate to every need in order to tell the tale of Carl and Ellie. Plus, it just makes the whole thing that much more artsy. And on the revelation that they're going to have a baby, look at these smiling cheeks, it's on to the next step of montaging. Baby prep! But before that note, we are halfway through the video, so subscribe if you're up for more. Suggestions can go to our Discord server too if you have other scenes you want to see dissected, less emotional, or more. Break my heart some more, why don't you? I dare you. Painting! We've already established Ellie's penmanship out of the two of them, and Carl... Well, Carl can handle the blimp decorations. Guy loves his balloons. 
and it can foreshadow the final act it had as well. Engorged in bright yellows and beautiful blues before... The turn. Camera panning to the side into the wall as a transition to another room. This room void of pretty much all colour. Soundtrack switching to the same motifs, but saddened, slowed down and delayered, emptying out for the final moment of acknowledgement. Framed within a frame as we see our to-be parents trapped in a box of disability. Though I'm sure there's a handful of interpretations here, the bottom line is pretty clear, that these two are unable to ever have children. You know it's pregnancy related through the poster, and you know it's bad news because... well, just look at it all. I always thought it was just infertility from the get-go, but considering the two had already begun a baby room construction, it's probably fair to assess that Ellie already was pregnant. So perhaps the diagnosis was a miscarriage that would then lead to the inability to have kids going forwards. Didn't realise that was even a possibility, but the more I learn about the secrets of pregnancy, the more I am horrified every single time. But now, they must move on. No longer are we at these static, wide angles. Before, the shots felt very montage -y, as if we were looking onto these pieces of their lives from the outside. But now we're closing much further in, seeing a much more personal approach in the filmmaking as they have to handle this devastating life circumstance. Carl keeping a sad eye on Ellie, more frames within a frame as their life is now more closed off and unfree. As we look down on Ellie, even more crushed against the frame. For someone who was clearly the ray of sunshine out of the two of them, it hits so much harder that she is the one to be muted down like this. But it's not the end of the line, just a bump on the road. Carl now being the one to introduce a response more than just a negative, because the fact still remains that they're together and there's still adventures to be had. Bringing out that age old book from the start, there's still some happiness here to be had. The sun's still out, beaming on their face, just with scattered shadows across them too. And so they redirect. Same roles as before, Ellie on paintwork and Carl on the blimp, but for a new goal, to live on the edge of Paradise Falls, the very first dream the two ever had. You don't necessarily need children to have a satisfying life, and they're happy still, despite their little spot. Thus begins the saving art, not to be trifled with as Carl swears across his heart, same as he did as a child. The two forever in sync with character traits that have cemented with them over the years. Now shot in one camera motion, a collection of match cuts, directly cutting to later on in time, as the jar filled with change. Sometimes to showcase the passing of time we get cross dissolves, but direct cuts work too. Especially when you have the advantage of dynamic lighting on your side, the time of day highlighting that it's a different day at all. But then, life has its other bumps along the way. Nothing too crazy happening here, just moving on to the reveal. Though, to be fair, an accident was probably always going to happen since Carl spends zero frames actually looking at the road. And so away goes the jar, wide out from the camera. And then some more. Carl hospitalised in bed, an entire tree through the roof, each time the jar getting more and more filled with coins before it's taken out, and always exploded with that hammer of Carl's. Really likes that tool, huh? And on to another aspect of life, the daily joy of fixing one's time. Clearly a pastime that the two kept up as routine, and now a new way of presenting time forward. Repeating the same shot again and again, with other context clues. No need for Carl's face, you can sort of just see it in how aged his clothes get, or at least how slightly baggier they are in life. Though you do see him briefly now going grey to highlight that these are big jumps in time.
before finalizing on a bow tie and a very aged couple. Still with that youthful smile though, and a spring in their step. They've lived an entire lifetime together and do not regret a single second of it. Even with that news somewhere in the middle, life goes on. Now so used to the routine of their lives, old Carl here doesn't even fear the balloons flying off, he's ready for it. Camera static and unperturbed, cause there's no stakes here. As the two continue to live their happy lives together, dancing just the two of them on this romantic night. Light again kind of bloomed for that angelic romantic air. That old Paradise Falls jars a thought in the background, obscured behind the two and needing a focus ball to be noticed by the viewer at all. Yet another dream goal they've left to the side, happy instead to just be together. Old people doing boring chores now, but still finding the light of their lives on the other side. Kind of reminiscent to the start of this sequence. S still chipper and wholesome through and through. And cleaning some more. Typically a bit of an uninteresting life beat, but it's time for more silent thoughts as Carl spots something in the foreground. Ellie as a kid and the sprawl for Paradise Falls. Their life has been full of happiness mostly, but would young Ellie be happy with where they've settled, never achieving their youthful dreams? Once again lingering on a single note in the soundtrack to imply that sadder revelation, it's the first indication of genuine regret, as they're old now. Choices have been made. Not that it has to be met with negativity, we've long learned that, Carl. Cutting straight to a travel agent. You can fill in the gaps. They may be old, but they're still able, just with commercial flights rather than their own creation. Framed within a frame so we can catch the context of these offices and packed in yet another picnic. More bread and cheese and wine, their favorite pastime at their favorite place. And a surprise dream trip. This time Carl being eager at the top to reveal his bucket list plan. If it wasn't for that. Seemingly not too serious at first, until the second time, when Carl is so rushed he even loses his hat. Ellie has lost the spring in her step, and maybe this sunset is representing more than just the end of a beautiful day, but that their time is up, and everything must end eventually. as we once again slide into our next scene. Again, this time with a cross dissolve, cause hills make for bad wolves. Bed laid against the wall just like Carl beforehand, but clearly much more serious this time with those IV drips in the background. And what better way to capture more of their youthful bond than with Carl's entrance with... The very same setup for their early day interactions. There's always a balloon. This time, less of a jump scare. Ah! The music now just that somber piano. All other instruments have faded away for this quiet, bittersweet time. As she has some art and craft stuff at her bedside table and the adventure book in her hand. A small detail that she's added something we'll see later. Saying their, final saying their final goodbyes with a fix of his bow tie, a touch on the face, and a kiss on the forehead. It's their love language for each other, and it's their time. Down on the book, neutral on Carl, and wide as they hold hands for the final time. Hat at the end of the bed, and blooming warm lighting bursting through the window. Not because it's happy, but because it's comfortable. A happy end to a happy life, even if it's sad to be at an end but life goes on, one life. Sat at the funeral at the very end of the day, on her side, surrounded by flowers. He is now alone, no matter the length you spin it with. That single balloon in hand. As we match cut, cross dissolve exactly at that home. 
Dim lighting for a sad night, paint faded with age, no longer the idyllic dream, but an unnovel and dreary place without your soulmate, as we slowly fade to black. What a killer of an ending. The best and worst five minutes Pixar ever produced. A short in its own right, and just the foundation of this underrated movie. But worry not, dry your eyes with the power of editing. Bam! Here he is at the top of Paradise Falls. Huzzah! It's a happy ending for him a little later than this. He even gets a kid! And a spin-off TV series down the line. This sequence is Pixar at one of their absolute best, and magically told with nary a word. It is investing, it is endearing, and it is crushing. How they managed to enamor us with characters so quickly is a masterclass in writing and animation, and a legacy that Pixar will have cemented. That was the scene that changed Pixar's up. Thank you for watching. My name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Cherish every moment. And I'll see you in a bit.